this is probably what's causing you to be lazy. The highest version of yourself that has your dream life and everything you want, she's not lazy. That person is not lazy. When she says she's gonna do something, she gets it done. The only way that you're gonna get there is by implementing small habits every single day that is gonna get you there. It's the little things that matter. So I'm gonna share with you the 12 habits that you need in 2024 to turn you into this person that is not a lazy girl and that has all the things that you want to have. You have a version of yourself in your head that you want to show up for every single day. You have this dream life in your head and the only thing that's in between the life that you're living now and the life that you want to be living, your dream life, all these goals and aspirations that you have that are already yours. You just have not stuck it out long enough and put in the work long enough to actually have it come true. It's in the little things that we do daily that get us closer and closer and closer to our goals. It's the small habits, the tiny things. And being lazy is the one thing that stops us from getting there. I spent half of 2023 majority of that time literally being so lazy I knew exactly what I needed to be doing but I just wasn't doing it and I figured out a way this year that is going to stop me from making that same mistake and I'm going to share with you the 12 small things that you can do daily so that you don't make the same mistakes that I made last year starting off with habit number one I'm a big believer in your mindset and that your mindset is the reason why you are where you are now it's the thoughts like your thoughts have such your thoughts have such a big I can't think of the word but like your thoughts are really really important when it comes to how you spend your day so the minute you open your eyes in the morning before you think about anything else I want you to express as much gratitude as you can as possible whoever you serve whatever your faith is for me I'm just wake up and just thank God genuinely and intentionally that I literally opened my eyes this morning I'm just thankful that I'm surrounded by friends and family that are in good health I try to think of as many things as possible that I can be thankful and grateful for in that moment the minute that I wake up because I read this quote that said what if you woke up this morning and at the end of the day when you woke up the, ne the next day you only had what you thank God for throughout that day and it really 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 did hit home because I feel like a lot of times when we find ourselves trying to pay pray or get closer in our faith all we do is ask 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 and just ask for things and beg God for things that we feel like we need so much but when do we ever stop and genuinely and intentionally thank God for where we are right now there are so many people that would die to be in your situation and in your circumstances and I feel like a lot of us are super 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 ungrateful and this is why we are not motivated to get up every day and do the things that we want to get done because we feel so entitled to the life that we have now when it can all be taken away in any instance so as soon as you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes you need to try to be as grateful as you possibly can before you get on your phone, before you do anything. Put your mind in the right place, which is gratefulness and thankfulness. You need to be grateful and show gratitude. Gratitude is one of the biggest things that I need to get back in the habit of for this year. And it has made the biggest difference when I did practice gratitude every day, not just in the morning, but all throughout the day. But I feel like as soon as you open your eyes, you need to show gratitude. If you are a person who likes to journal, which I really do like to write, I try to list down as many things as possible that I can find to be grateful for today and the list just goes on and on and on and on and on and if you think there's nothing in life to be grateful for you are mistaken even the small things like getting up and walking my dog I'm finding myself to be more grateful just for me being able to do that there's so many people that cannot do that and we take it for granted so the minute you wake up show gratitude be grateful this is going to put your mind in a completely different space and it's going to change your attitude and you're going to find yourself being more productive throughout the day because you realize the only thing that matters is now don't even give your mind the chance to let these negative thoughts creep into your head when you get up and you start being grateful that's what your focus is don't let these thoughts creep into your mind we have to take control of our thoughts and watch the things that we're thinking which leads me to habit number two which is when you open your eyes afterwards get out of bed sleeping in I feel like once you start sleeping in and sleeping in and sleeping in and convincing yourself I need more sleep I need more sleep I need more sleep I deserve to just lay here it's like a downhill spiral from there then you decide to order takeout then you get back in bed and you go back to sleep then you wake up and you realize it's 8 p.m and all you've done is slept the day away and ate out all day every day I found myself doing this a lot during the summer I felt like I worked so hard during the first and second quarter of the year I just deserved to sit back relax and was sleeping in so much and I regret it like I do regret it I understand that we're gonna have our days where that's gonna be needed but every single day no and when you're in this like grind mode in this grind season where you're trying to get somewhere you have 
goals that you want to reach and you've made one of your biggest goals to wake up in the morning or wake up early and get out of bed but you keep sleeping in and sleeping in bed this is what's causing you to be more lazy when you say that you're gonna get up get up tell yourself you have five seconds to get up especially because it's cold and it's like still winter right now getting up and getting out of bed is like a chore for me like I have to push myself but every day I remind myself I told myself I was gonna wake up this early and go to the gym so I need to get up and get out of bed don't just open your eyes say your prayers and then go back to sleep no physically get up and put on something else to wear get out of your pajamas that voice in your mind that's trying to convince you to lay down and sleep in and sleep in is trying to keep you comfortable and it's our brain's way of protecting us because once we start feeling discomfort we don't feel good about it and our brain wants to keep us as comfortable and as safe as possible but in discomfort is going to be where you thrive and where you grow comfort to me is like also being lazy in a sense like your brain is trying to keep you in bed because it wants to keep you comfortable but you cannot listen to that little voice. You have to find a way to still thrive and still reach your goals in discomfort. You can't just only do the things you wanna do when you feel comfortable or when you feel like it. That's not gonna get you anywhere. Habit number three to get you out of your lazy girl era is try and find a way to make it a habit to move your body daily. Whether it's literally a 10 minute walk, you need to be moving. When we're just sitting and sitting and sitting all day, all we're doing is just increasing that laziness move your body your body was made to literally move and when you feel like you have to go out and move your body because you've made it a goal to go work out or go to the gym or whatever it is and you have this mindset of oh like i have to go to the gym i have to work out i have to work out all that's doing is putting a negative connotation be behind being able to move your body but that's not the reality of it and this has made the most change in my mindset and the biggest switch that i've made in connection with my fitness and just not being lazy anymore is that it's a privilege to be able to get up and move your body every day and this is one of the things that's going to help you because once you do that one thing and you get up and move your body the endorphins that you feel and your energy level is increased it makes you want to knock more things off of your to-do list and be more productive throughout the day you've already had one small win by just getting up being grateful that takes not even that much energy literally all you're doing is thinking about all the things that you're grateful for that's nothing your second habit is just getting up and putting on different clothes that does not take a lot of energy you have two small wins for the day your third small win is just going to be getting up and move your body do these three things every single day is going to be have a ha become a habit try and do these three things for just 30 days straight these three habits as soon as you wake up you think of or you write down as many things that you can be grateful for. As soon as you wake up, you get out of your pajamas and you get up. Go from your bedroom to the living room or some other area of the house. But our mind associates our bed with sleep. So when you're laying down and you're just, you feel like you're just lounging, eventually you're going to fall asleep because that's what your brain associates it with. It happens every time. So I tell you, do not study in your bed. And this is not me telling you that you have to get up and go run for an hour outside or get up and go to the gym and lift weight for 45 minutes. If that's not your goal, you don't need to do that. But just getting up and doing five push-ups, five squats, five whatever, as long as you're moving your body, it makes the difference. You're building up these small little wins every single day and you're building up on that which is going to increase your productivity level you're not going to feel like just sleeping the day away and just lounging around all day because you're already on a roll you already have these little small things under your belt for the day habit number four which is by far one of my favorite habits and which this is like the one that i come back to every time i find myself in one of those lazy girl eras where i'm just going week after week after week not getting anything done not being productive not living up to my potential and showing up as a girl that I know I am this habit is what checks me like gets me back in place like it's like a full like girl what are you doing like get up wake up and this is the podcast that you listen to the books that you read and the content and the music that you listen to it has such a big effect on us and I feel like we don't even realize it when they tell you to surround yourself with more like-minded people or surround yourself like if you want to be the a millionaire go surround yourself with three people that are other millionaires but for a lot of people we don't have that around us there's not just millionaires walking down our street or wherever instead of listening to music you turn on a positive podcast or a motivational video or a motivational speech or a motivational book or whatever when i tell you this gets me going and it makes me feel so unstoppable there's something about just listening to someone else talk about something that they've overcome that you're currently going through that motivates me like if they can do it why not me so when you find yourself in that lazy girl era or you're just in bed and you just can't because sometimes depression is real and that is the reason why we feel so lazy but in reality we're depressed 
But when you are laying there and you just feel like scrolling on social media or doing something that's not as productive, turn on a motivational podcast. And I'm going to list my favorite podcasts and channels that I like to read and listen to that I'm currently binging right now because even though it is the beginning of the year and I feel very, very motivated, those little tiny thoughts do creep into my mind. It's just like, sleep in. You deserve a rest day. You deserve a cheat meal. You deserve all these things that I know is not time for it yet. I put these things on and it, make, it gets me back on track. And it takes three minutes for something to imprint on us. Pay attention to the music that you listen to and the things that you're hearing daily, especially if you live in a very negative household and that's the conversations are just filled with negativity. This is probably what's causing you to be lazy. If you're listening to some music and videos and watching these people that are very, very negative or hanging around a lot of people that are negative, this is probably what's causing you to be lazy. So make it a habit to listen to people that are motivating, that are positive, and that are uplifting. Stop listening to things that you know are no good for you and turn it into you turning on your favorite podcast to listen to people who have made it to where you're trying to go, who have done the things that you're trying to do, and then ask yourself, if they could do it, why not me? If they made it through, why not me? There's no difference between you and them besides the fact that they stuck at it long enough and they kept going without proof that whatever goal that they were trying to reach is happening. They still kept going, they still kept going, and they stuck it out long enough to actually get there. But you keep quitting because you have no evidence that what you're doing is actually working. But you know that it works because other people have done it. Millions of other people have done it. There's been so many times where I've had a goal, and I know you probably can relate. Like, how many times have you had a goal whether it's like okay I'm gonna stop eating junk food and your friend comes around you and all of a sudden you feel tempted to like okay maybe just this one and you ask yourself like you know that you shouldn't but you have this internal battle with the person you're trying to become and the person that you currently are now and it's like that struggle between should I or should I not should I or should I not get into the habit of asking yourself as what I'm doing now the actions that I'm taking now the things that I'm doing now getting me closer to or further away from my goals. And this is like a light bulb switch for me because when I'm just laying down and I'm just lounging and I realize I've had the TV on for hours and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I could be doing something else that is going to increase the revenue in my business or let me reach my subscriber goal on YouTube. Like I could literally be doing something else, but instead I'm sitting here and I watch the TV and most likely it's something that I've seen a million times. You have like 2024 is not the year for us to be playing around with our potential and ourselves like snap out of it, like literally snap out of it and get into the habit of asking yourself is what I'm doing now getting me closer to or further away from my goals. And that is my fifth habit. And I've started doing this now and it's like, I'm just sitting here. What could I be doing that can get me closer to my goals? Ask yourself that throughout the day. When you find yourself feeling lazy and you feel like you're not doing yourself, ask yourself that question. Is what I'm doing now getting me closer to or further away from my goals? And this is not one of those videos where I'm just telling you to work hard, work hard, work hard, work hard so you can stop being lazy. But it's literally a mindset thing. We're trying to change our mind. We're trying to change these thoughts that we're having that is causing us to be so lazy. Habit number six, I feel like is very overlooked. And this is paying attention to what we're putting inside of our bodies. And I mean this with as much emphasis as I can put on it. The foods and the drinks that you eat have an effect on your mood and your body and your energy level. As someone who has had these periods where I'm eating a lot more food here and then I'm eating less food here or I'm going out every weekend for a drink or I'm not going out every weekend for a drink. When you go out for a drink or you take it a little bit too far one weekend and you wake up the next morning and you just feel so sluggish and there's nothing you can do but lay in bed, there goes a day wasted and you feel like crap. I noticed there's a big difference between when I focus on cooking my food at home then going out and buying it. There's just a difference. I'm able to come home, still move around, still get chores done, still do what I need to do. Then when I eat out, all I want to do is go to sleep right after. And yeah, the food tastes so good, but the way that it makes me feel so lazy and unproductive, that could be one of the reasons why you feel like you're sleeping too much or you're not able to get a lot done. Pay attention to what you're eating. There are literally foods that increase your um, energy level and foods that decrease your energy level. Focus on the foods that allow you to show up as your highest self, that are going to allow you to be more productive throughout your day. If you know you're eating something or you're consuming something that is not doing you any good, why still consume it? Especially on a daily basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, just eating out, eating out, eating out, eating out, and you know it's no good. 
there has to become a time where you get fed up with your own self. Like you're just fed up with yourself. You're fed up with the choices that you're making and you're just like, it's time for something to change. Pay attention to the foods you're eating and get in the habit of choosing healthier foods and things that nourish your body. Not only nourish your body, but also nourish your mind. Your mental matters so much. Habit number seven, which a lot of people struggle with and I struggled with myself, which is saying no more. You have to choose the life that you want and know that there are certain things that are gonna get you there and there are certain things that are not. All the things that are not gonna get you there, you need to say no to and you need to stand firm on that. Do not feel bad for saying no right now. Do not feel sorry for yourself that you can't go. You have to realize that we are all on our different paths. What your friend is doing, you probably can't do because you have a different goal. Do, don't feel sorry for yourself because you can't go out and party every single weekend or whenever your friend texts you because they want to go out and have a drink and you're saying, no, I'm going to go to the gym later or I already told myself I was going to go to the gym later. Why are you feeling bad for yourself because you're focused on a goal and you can't hang out? The bars are always going to be open. They're probably open 24 hours, 24 hours now that I think of it. Like there's always going to be parties. There's always going to be bars. There's always going to be fun. Right now, we have goals for this year. And by any means necessary, we're trying to get there. So when you know that someone else is asking you to do something, and I think of it as like, okay, this is a test. Like when someone has asked me to do something and I know good and well, I said that for this 12 weeks, I'm not going to do this. But someone is asking me, okay, this is a test. Are you going to... Stand on business about what you said and say no. Or are you going to waver and let that just creep into your mind and then throw you off game? And then now if it's like you're starting from day one, when you wake up the next day and it's like, dang, that did nothing for me. Literally. Get in the habit of saying no more and actually meaning it. It doesn't make you a mean person. It doesn't make you a bad person. And it doesn't make you not nice. It just makes you a person who has goals and who is disciplined enough to say no and sacrifice a little bit of fun right now for the life that you want in the future. Or when you look back years from now, you're gonna realize that you sacrificed the li your dream life for a little bit of fun right now and just to live in the moment. Habit number eight, which is one of my favorite habits. I love this habit. I do this habit a lot, which is getting to the habit of sleeping at least seven to eight hours. A lot of people I feel like are in this grind mode and grind season when they are sacrificing their sleep and not realizing that it's having a negative effect on the quality of your work and the qual and your mental health. Staying up, only getting three to four hours of sleep and still feeling like you can get a lot done is terrible. And I used to be one of those people where I felt like I'm grinding and I'm doing a good job if I'm only sleeping three hours a day and spending the rest of the day being productive and no, especially for women, it messes up your hormones. You need sleep. I aim for eight hours. Like I feel like I'm, in, I'm like a mother, like girl, get your eight to nine to 10 hours of sleep and then you wake up and you go. And I felt a complete difference. I feel a lot better when I get my sleep. When I don't get my sleep, I am not in a good mood. And I can wholeheartedly admit to that when I'm at work and I know I only got four or five hours of sleep. It's like, I don't want to be bothered. Do not talk to me. Don't even look at me the wrong way or I just might spaz. Focus on getting enough sleep. You will feel more productive throughout the day. You won't feel like you have to take so many naps which is also, you're probably going to be feeling more lazier throughout the day when you're trying to stay up all throughout the night, two, three in the morning, and knowing you should be asleep and knowing you could get enough sleep. I try to literally plan my day around my sleep. I know I'm going to go to sleep at 9.30. I know I'm going to go to sleep at 10. So what am I going to do before that? What I'm trying to try to get as much stuff as I've done before that. And then that 30 minutes before I'm going to go to sleep and be in bed, I'm in bed, no electronics, no nothing. Because sleep is very, 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 very important. I can't stress that enough. You need to be getting enough sleep. While we're on the topic of sleep, this leads me to habit number nine, which is planning your days at night for the next day. If you wake up and you're just going out into every day and just hoping that you're going to do all the right things today that is going to work on your goals, what are you doing? Put these systems in place every day so that you know you check this off your box so that at the end of the year, you know, you did everything that you possibly could day in and day out to get you to your goal. Whether you got there or not, you're going to be a completely different person. If you are planning your days and you're planning out the things that you know, you should know what you're going to eat tomorrow. You should know what time you're going to go work out tomorrow. You should know what time you're going to do your assignments for school tomorrow. All these things should be written out and planned. You need to know how you're going to spend your days and how you're spending your days so that when it's time to look up at the end of the year and you feel like, why did I put in so much effort if I'm not in my goal? And you realize I literally spent my days doing none of the things that I knew I needed to do to get me closer to my goals. Every single night I'm planning how I want my day to go tomorrow. Literally 
edit a video, film a video, ship orders, make new products, check emails, do schoolwork, go to work. All these things are written down. And constantly throughout the day, I'm reminding myself, I could be doing this instead of sitting down watching TV. I still haven't checked off this for my goal list. If you haven't watched my 12 week year video, this goes into a little bit more detail on how you can structure and plan your days around your goals so that you're actually putting in the work because a lot of people are just doing busy work. You're not actually doing the things that are gonna move the needle. You're just keeping yourself busy. Habit number 10 is walking. I know that this seems like walking, like really, but I find that when I'm having a lazy day and I still haven't walked my dog and I go out and I walk my dog and I come back, I don't want to get back in bed. I want to do something more productive. Not only that, but just moving your body, like I said before, increases your endorphins and makes you a lot more productive. It makes you want to go out and cross more things off your list. Even if you have a fitness goal and you feel like you have to go and run, 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 what you don't want to, and you've been in your lazy girl era for a while, going on those hot girl walks as popular as they were in 2020 are so beneficial. They become more about you and spending time with yourself than it is about just going and getting your steps in or meeting your step goal for the day. Trust me when I say this, get in the habit of walking outside every single day. Habit number 11, which I feel like we all need to work on together, which is put your phone down. When you find yourself just mindlessly, mindlessly, mindlessly scrolling, put your phone down and think to yourself, what could I be doing to get myself closer to my goals? We just find ourselves scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And then you're looking at all these other people who are posting about how they're doing the things that they need to do or all these people who are reaching their goals. You're looking at it, commenting, liking and all this. And then think to yourself, I actually need to be doing that and putting in the work instead of just being on social media, looking at everybody else do it. My final habit for this video, and quite frankly, the most obvious, but one that a lot of people do not do, which is researching the thing is not doing the thing. Planning to do the thing is not doing the thing. Talking to your friends about how you're gonna do the thing is not doing the thing. The only thing that is doing the thing is actually doing it. And when I say the thing, that is whatever that goal is for you. If your goal is to lose weight, planning to lose weight is not going to make you lose weight. Planning to eat healthy is not going to make you lose healthy. Eating healthy is going to make you lose weight. Doing your workouts is going to make you lose weight. Talking about doing your workouts, bragging to your friends about how you're going to make this life-changing fitness journey and lose all these pounds, that's not going to make you do it. The only thing that's going to get you to where you want to be in life is actually doing what you need to do. And it's not like, I feel like a lot of people feel like they don't know what to do. You know exactly what you need to do to get yourself where you want to be. A lot of people know what to do to lose weight. They know what to do to start their fitness journey. They know that they need to go and eat more protein. They know that they need to do more cardio. They know that they need to lift weights, but do they do it? No. And then this is December of 2024 and people are wondering, why they did not reach their goals because you did not do the thing and not only did you not do it but you didn't do it long enough to actually see results and it's like what do you honestly have to lose i feel like when you put yourself in that mindset it's like on the way to achieving your goals you have nothing to lose and you're most likely 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to become a way better person on that journey than you would have if you would have just quit you don't know what's going to happen if you don't do it my only good can come from actually doing it and actually putting in the effort to do it. I feel like when I leave this earth and when I leave this life, I want to leave very empty feeling like I gave it my all. If I never reach my goals again, I know that I put in the effort day in and day out and I did the things that were going to get me closer and closer and closer to that dream, whatever it is for you. I don't know what it is. I don't know what your goals is. Feel free to share them with me in the comments. And share the things that you know that you could be doing to get you there. But for some odd reason, this laziness is what's stopping us from doing the things. So use all these tips that I mentioned. If you can't use all of them or you feel like you want to start small, choose three. Do them every single day. And watch that laziness just start disappearing from your whole body and your whole being. We have to start showing up as our highest selves. And our highest selves are not lazy. Like I feel like I look at it like this. Your future self is looking at you like laughing because they've done all the things to get there, but you're still playing around with your own potential and feel like that you can't do it. Think of it that way. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, I really, really, really suggest you go watch the 12 week year video. Join me in my 12 week year journey for 2024. I'm already loving it and so obsessed with it at the moment. 
I will let you guys know how things go from there. And I appreciate you for tuning in. I pray that we all reach our dreams and 2024 will be better than we imagined it to be. I will see you guys in the next video.